Hello everyone, this is Al-Fadi. Thank you so much as always, of course, for joining us uh, to watch this uh, exciting video series. Uh, the one we called The Search for Muhammad or The Quest for the Real Muhammad, basically. And thank you for your interactions, your questions, and your comments. Uh, today, um, you know, so far I should say, uh, we have addressed a number of historical problems related, for instance, to coins, rock inscriptions, but today we're going to talk about further, uh, you know, historical problems as evidence that there is some real holes in the narrative concerning Muhammad and uh, his person and uh, the, histor uh, the, the histor historical, basically, Muhammad in this case. With that in mind, of course, I want to uh, turn uh, the focus here on Dr. J. Smith, who have been doing an amazing work, really, uh, in this field, and uh, you have been really doing a great job unpacking all of these difficulties. So what further evidence or problems in this case do we have? Yeah, just to be clarify, I'm not doing the research in this area. Uh, people like Mel, who is on Sneakers Corner, uh, Murad, who is from the Middle East. We have Joe, who is uh, uh, from also from England and also uh, from Europe. We then also have Bala, who is in India, and then we have Sarah, who is in, uh, uh, down in the uh, Southern Hemisphere. But these are people who have actually done a lot of the research. I would already mentioned Odin LaFontaine. These guys and gals have been working on this material for over 20 years. All I'm doing is taking what they have introduced to me, thrown at me, and said, and being their mouthpiece, because That's they great. need somebody who can actually get online, who can go up on the internet and actually communicate it so others can then appreciate it, but also use it in their own ministry or with Muslims that they're engaging with publicly. So that's all I am. I'm nothing more than that. Uh, please don't think that I'm actually doing the germinal research. I'm not capable of doing this kind of research. They're way ahead of me. And that's why it's so good to be able to input, impose and take their material and then get it out to the whole world. But And what are they finding? And so here's some other historical problems. Let's just take and let's go up on the slide and let's look at the rightly guided caliphs because certainly you would assume if there is a person named uh, Abu Bakr who is living in Medina uh, lived, uh, was a caliph for two years especially Umar who comes after him uh, from 634 to 644 that 10 year period whereas Islam has moved its borders out it's now moving across all the way out uh, uh, from the west it's going moving all the way out over to Afghanistan moving in the east towards North Africa, getting across Egypt and all the rest. You would assume that people would know who these guys are. Uh, they caliphs, if they're caliphs, that means their name would be out there. The coins would have had their names on it. We know that didn't happen. The inscriptions would be referring right. to them. We know that didn't happen. But someone somewhere should know about these these characters, these first rightly guided caliphs, right. as they call it. They call it the golden period of Islam. They call it the Rashidun period. Why did they call it? Because this is where Islam really took for, uh, form. This is where it, it uh, made a force for itself and expanded its borders. And as they conquered right, left, going both west and east, they then took over a lot of these cities and they would have now, someone somewhere would have known about these guys. You would think, you would hope. That's right. That's what we are always looking for. So one of the things that this group of the researchers have been doing, and they've been working on this for about five to ten, some as many as 20 years, they've been asking this question, where are these rightly guided caliphs? And if you look on the uh, screen there, they cannot find, first of all, they cannot find the 9th century Muhammad. So can we find these caliphs at least? There is no rock inscription in the 7th century which uses that term caliph to begin with. That's the first thing they noticed. More than that, the term which was used was Amir al-Mu'minin. Amir al-Mu'minin, yeah. Commander of the faithful, yeah. which does not denote a successor. So even the term caliph is not found in these rock inscriptions or any of these, these references from the seventh century. That term was not used. Yet today, we're using that term all the time to refer to these four characters. Or you might say Muhammad would be the first caliph from 624 up until, until he died in 632. The later term caliph was introduced by, as Khalifat by Rasul Allah means the successor of Messenger of God. That is introduced in the eighth and ninth century, not in the seventh century. So already you've got a problem here because even the term doesn't, it's in the wrong century. Okay. So, so even the term, if these people existed, was applied to them later. Ah, and when later? The 9th and 10th century right. applies it to them, which means it's a redaction back. Exactly. Again, here's another example of a redaction back. So, who, you know, I was really hammered by Yusuf Qadi for getting the wrong name at the wrong, uh, in the wrong century. Well, how about him hammering the, the Islamic traditions for doing the same problem? That's right. 
They should have known better that this word would not have existed that early. So why are they calling him a caliph? Maybe he should uh, take a deep dive into this. <laughs> yeah. Let's go back to let's go back to the slide here. Uh, so what about any references to these first four caliphs? Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Ali. Are there any references to these names? Now remember, these names are very popular names. So of course you're going to have references to people call these. But notice that not one of them is a caliph. These inscriptions refer to them. Uh, that's why their, their, their historicity is seriously in doubt. Every attempt has been made to get the story that straight has failed. We just cannot find these caliphs referred to anywhere. Abu Bakr, let's look at Abu Bakr. Could not have been a caliph because all the contradictory evidence rules that out. I don't have time to unpack that. Go look at Mel and what he has done with Abu Bakr and, and also Murad. Mel and Murad have done a great job just showing that, that, that Abu Bakr could not have existed because there is nobody called that name. Yes, there are people called that name, but they're nothing more than people who are writing receipts on things of people exchanging. There's right. no per king or caliph referred, or in this case, no uh, Amir al muminin who is called that. Oh, Umar. His history rests on one rock inscription that could be about anyone of that name. Just anybody. His, he, that's the only reference we can find for someone named Umar. He did exist. Someone did exist named Umar. But as we're fine with Muhammad, there are kind of, there, we're going to find later there is actually another Muhammad that exists in the 7th century. But it's not the Muhammad of the 9th century. He mm. lived 100 miles too far north, and he was a Christian, and he was a king who is in charge of 30 cities. So you can see the difficulty is we can't place this Umar with anybody who is, who is later or anybody who is earlier. Uthman, we can't find anything for him. There's nothing, no reference for him at all. So just throw him out. And then of course, Ali of uh, the seventh century, first of all, he was never a caliph. He was never any of that sort. He died three years before his reign was meant to even have ended. So you can see they've got the wrong Ali. Uh, he was yeah. a guy, but he was not a caliph and he certainly was not anybody who is related to Muhammad. So one thing is interesting here. Are you telling me Uthman, who is credited for the Uthmanic Rasm, the first canon of the Quran, is not referenced in any of these important inscriptions and other we things? can't even find him. And this is why I keep on asking. I've been asking this since 1995. You keep on telling me about this guy named Uthman, and you keep on telling me about the fact that he had this, this Quran. And I've always asked for 25 years, can you show me where this guy exists to begin with? And secondly, can you show me where this Quran that supposedly he canonized in 652? Can you please help me here? For 25 years I've asked this question, and nobody can show it. And all they can say, well, he's referred to, and if we look at all the references, References he's referred to, they refer back to him, and all these references where he's referred to come from the 9th and 10th century. And even the references to his Quran come from the 9th and 10th century. And finally, when we do get the manuscripts, and people like Tayyar uh, Atukulic and Ekmel and Nisal, these two Turkish scholars from 2002 to 2007, finally look at these six major manuscripts, they have realized that these manuscripts don't even come from a guy named Uthman. They don't come from that time period. In fact, they're saying they don't even come from copies of that time period. Right. These are Muslim scholars, so they were saying this in 2007, we're now in 2020, and yet Muslims are not listening and not looking, and they still can't come up with anybody called uh, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Ali. And that's why we need to be careful. If you're going to be talking about this, you need to come up with evidence. Now, what I'm going to do in the next episode, what I want to do is I want to actually look about the, uh, about the Hijrah. I want to go into the Hijrah, and then I also want to look at the 741 date. Well, I think that's enough for this, this one, because this is, this is devastating in and of itself. Forget about Muhammad, He's, we can't find, we can't even find the guys that follow him. And we can't find anybody who is historical until Mu'awiyah. Right. Uh, of what we would recognize as Muslim, if he were a Muslim, and what we now know about Mu'awiyah, as we saw in the coins, has nothing to do with Islam.